Hello students and welcome to the final video of section 1.2. In this video we're going to be looking at properties of limits. So we're going to make some suppositions here. We're going to assume that the limit as x approaches a of f of x is going to give us some number l and that the limit uh, as x approaches a of g of x is going to give us some number m. We're going to find all the following limits in terms of L and M. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'll do, what I'll start with is by kind of distributing this limit of f of x plus the limit as x approaches a of g of x. So you can write that out. Well, we know that this piece right here is L and that this piece right here is going to give us M. So what our final answer is, is L plus M. Whatever those numbers come out to be, we could add those together. So in a very similar problem, we can distribute that limit again. So the limit as X approaches A of F of X minus the limit as X approaches A of G of X. And in this case, it's gonna just be L minus M. With division, we can also distribute so we'll have the limit as x approaches a of f of x over the limit as x approaches a of g of x. Well, in my numerator, I have L, and in my denominator, it comes out to be M. So whatever those two values are, we could divide them. We can even do the same thing in a cross multiplication. So the limit as x approaches a of f of x times the limit as x approaches a of g of x. Well, that's going to get us L times M. Now in this case, in, in part five, it says C. And all C is in this case is a constant. So we can write the limit as x approaches a of C times the limit as x approaches a of f of x. Well, since c stays constantly the same value, we know that that value is not going to change no matter what the value, where the x is that we're looking. So we know that this is going to be c. And since this part evaluates to be l, so we have c times l. See l. Even if we have exponents, we can still distribute into the function. So the limit as x approaches a of f of x, all of this is going to be to the power of p now. Well, we know that this part is L and we still have the power of p. So L to the p. And again, uh, kind of like we saw in part five, the limit as x approaches a of c is just going to be that same value, that same constant, so these are some properties of limits. We don't necessarily need to continue out to write limit as x approaches a value and then have both of those parts. That'll be too much. So we can actually start to phase that out. So now let's use these graphs. And we're going to apply the properties of limits from the graphs into the functions that are below. So here I'm reading this as x approaches two from the left. So as x approaches two from the left of f of x, so two from the left, here's two, from the left is going up to three, and then we have plus, and then two from the left of g of x. So here's two on g of x, and from the left is going to equal one. So three plus one is going to get me four. In our next problem, I have two times um, as the limit as x approaches negative one for f of x. So as x approaches negative one, so here's negative one, and the limit is negative six, so two times negative six, minus three times, and then the same value as x approaches negative one from g of x. So here's g of x, negative one, and the y value is negative one, so three times negative one. So I had two times negative six, negative 12, minus three times negative one, so that becomes plus three. So negative 12 plus three gets us negative nine. Now the limit of 
as x approaches negative 3 of f of x minus g of x. So let's look at those graphs, f of x and g of x, as x approaches negative 3. Now we want to look at it from both sides. So um, negative 3 is right here for f of x, and it comes out to be negative 3. And then at g of x, where is negative 3? Right here. So on the left side, it's going up to positive infinity. On the right side, it's going down to negative infinity. So that part does not exist. And so our answer does not exist, and we want to state why. So what's the reason for that? The reason for that is because the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the left of g of x does not equal the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the right of g of x. That's going to be our reasoning here. In this problem, we have negative 2 uh, times f of x over g of x, and the limit as x approaches 6. So let's look at it for f of x first. Here's 6, and the y value is negative 4, so I have negative 2 times negative 4. And in my denominator, uh, g of x, here is 6, and the y value is positive 6. So I have 8 over 6, or 4 thirds. In this case, I'm looking at the limit as x approaches 4, so I'm going to have 2 times f of x times g of x. So f of x at 4, it is negative 3. And then g of x at 4 is positive 4. We just need to multiply those things together, so I have negative 12 times 2, so negative 24. In this one, we have a quadratic, so f of x squared. We're looking at negative 2. So here's negative 2 on f of x, and the y value is negative 5, so I'm going to have negative 5 squared, which gets us 25. I've got a few more. So the square root of 2 times g of x, and we're looking at the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. So I'm going to have the square root of 2 times, now I'm going to go to g, and I'm going to look at what the limit is at 2 from the right side. Alright, so here's 2 from the right side though. The y value approaches 6. So 2 times 6, I get 12, and the square root of 12 is not a perfect square, but it can be simplified to be Let's see, 4 times 3 is 12, so square root of 4 is 2, and we still have the square root of 3. So 2 times the square root of 3. Now I'm looking at f of x and g of x, and we're dividing it, and we're looking at the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. So I'm just going to grab uh, g of x already because I already know what it is from this last problem. It was 6. Now let's look at f of x at 2 from the right. So 2 from the right, I'm approaching this line and it looks like the y value actually is negative 2. So I can write that down, negative 2. I simplify this and I get negative 1 third. And I've got one problem remaining, f of x minus g of x, and I'm looking at the limit as x approaches negative 1. So let's do that. I'm going to look at f of x first at negative 1. So here's negative 1 at f of, at f of x, and the y value is negative 6. So I'll write down negative 6 minus, and then g of x at negative 1. Here it is there, so that's going to be negative 1. So minus negative 1 right there, and I'm going to get this negative 6 plus 1 essentially, so negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. So that's how you can use the properties of limits, and you can even tie in like the functions with the graphs, with tables. If you can start to tie in all this information together now and start to focus on bringing in some of those old examples now, um, you're going to be so set up for the future as we start to approach that AP exam in May. This is going to include section 1.2. If you do need any help with any of those sections, please reach out to me immediately. I'm Mr. Hernandez, and I'm always here to help. Thank you.